Hey guys, Artistic or Autistic here. Um, the next proper episode of Art or Rot's unfortunately a bit delayed because I decided I wanted to track down someone and ask their permission to discuss the subject I had in mind. I mean, I'm sure it won't be a problem, and the video is already uh, well made because I regularly get ahead of myself. But, you know, it just seems like the polite thing to do. Anyway, um, while I wait for the response, I thought I'd try something different. A little poem I wrote a few years ago. It's got a bit of a children's story feel to it, but hopefully you'll like it. I humbly title it, The Greatest Poem Ever Written by Anyone. Everyone else calls it the two bumblebees. Uh, to help you keep track, the usual captions will serve instead of subtitles. That and it'll actually slow down a little bit. Bumblebee 1 and Bumblebee 2 lived in luxury in a shoe. They never fought, they always shared. They never hated, they only cared. At least they did for most of their days, until chaos appeared in the worst of ways, in the form of a pretty yellow vixen, whose presence caused most hearts to quicken. Bumblebee three was their fall, lusted after at every ball, chased and wanted, yearned for and needed, her charm that no resistance defeated. Bumblebee one and Bumblebee two began to have a quarrel, their fighting revolving around B3's every twirl. Look at me, said B1, doing a little dance. She can, with but bat of her eyes, put me in a trance. I'll ask her out, and she'll say yes, for I know that I'm the very best. Guess again, said B2, casually seated on their shoe. She wants someone who's mature and wise, not someone who just plays with flies. She'll go for me, that young B3, in that I have no doubt. For of all the bugs for two square miles, I have the greatest clout. B1 scoffed, and B1 snorted, rising in the air. Clout is all you can think of? Do you think she'll really care? You can prance around and flex those sticks, but she'll go for the one whose mind is quick. Trust me when I say, you haven't got a chance. For I hear that young B3 loves someone who can dance. Well, if dance it is, then you have failed. B2, indignant, nearly wailed, for I've seen you try and dance to show where nectar can be found. Any who follow your instructions to just run into the ground. Now hold on one second, B1 growled, compound eyes narrowed. Well, that wasn't my fault. They just got lost when they got to the sombrero. Whenever you dance, it seems to me like you've gone into a seizure. When she sees you, the competition will drop, and I could ask her at my leisure. N -n now listen here, you hairy git, B1 yelled with fury. You've got me mad, so you'd better leave, and do so in a hurry, cause when I start, I won't stop until every compound eye is crossed, and then I'll kick you so far away, no matter where you land, you're lost. Ha! Try me out and be surprised, was B2's shrieked reply. I'll bite, I'll kick, I'll slap, and I'll poke you in the eye. Black and yellow won't be your color. I'll give you colors new. To start, how about we try something similar? Maybe black and blue. And so the battle was on. The contestants met in battle grim and bloody. Okay, maybe it wasn't so bad. It was actually pretty funny. The two bees wrestled about inside the little shoe. And once they'd covered the entire floor, out the top sprawled B1 and 2. They yelled and shouted, bit and kicked, tumbled around the ground. For these two raging bees, consciousness was lost and found. To be quite honest, little damage was actually done. A bee can get dropped from a hundred miles and think the fall was fun. So bruises and broken limbs were few, despite attempts of the contrary. For they were puny little bees, though the strength of their stings could vary. But then, in the midst of chaos and rolling fists, the end of their battle came when horror strode into their midst. All right, into their midst is a word too strong. In between them would be wrong. It just kind of wandered by, quickly catching each battered eye. For there was lovely B3, all round and yellow. But she was walking arm in arm with this somewhat good-looking fellow. But she walked with a fiend, a traitor, a man the two now abhorred. For the beautiful B3 was flirting with that bastard before. Oh, hearts were broken, as they would be when love has fled. The two battlers got to their feet, their eyes hazy as their small scrapes bled. But soon, B1 and B2 apologized and forgave each other. Now they are yet again a brother and a brother.